guys today we're talking about garage simulator garage heat how do I heat myself out here in the Minnesota winter in my garage um, when I'm playing on my golf simulator hitting balls it's about 15 degrees outside 37 degrees in here um, so I'll show you how I get my simulator set up and then I'll go into a little detail about uh, the heat in here so here it is in all its glory uh, we'll get it set up and then we'll talk about the heat. All right, here's a time lapse of me putting the simulator together. All in all, it took about five and a half minutes between pulling the cars out and hitting the first shot. So you can see here, I'm getting stuff out of the way, pulling the cars out. Um, I kind of move the snowblower and the garbage can out of the way. Putting the mats down, the carpets and the mats that catch the shots when they after they hit the screen. Uh, screen coming down. Uh, turning the projector on. Here I'm getting the heater set up. We'll talk about those more in detail in a little, in a little bit. Uh, hooking up the iPad to the Apple TV to stream to the projector. And getting it all set up to E6. Here's the heater shot. I live in Minnesota. It's the winter. It's freezing in here. I gotta heat myself somehow. Um, so I'm talking about the, the heaters that I chose to use. Um, what I liked, what I didn't like, what I tried out and eventually rejected. Uh, hopefully all this stuff is useful to you. Thank you for watching, by the way. Appreciate uh, the views and the likes, uh, the comments and the subscribes. Keep them coming. It helps me know uh, what kind of content you want to see. Um, so uh, if, you, if you like this video, give me a like. Feel free to leave comments if you have questions about um, you know, what I did or what else I tested or where I bought the stuff I bought. Um, I'm happy to, to direct you sort of what I looked at and what I ended up buying. Okay, so like I said earlier, it's about 10, 15 degrees outside. It's 37 degrees in here according to my little, yeah, my garage thermostat, 37 degrees. So it's pretty cold. Um, this garage is not insulated. Uh, so for me, I needed to find a solution that wouldn't be super wasteful on, on energy. Um, if I tried to pump heat into this garage to get it up to, you know, 55 or so to be halfway comfortable, um, it would just cost so much and it'd be leaking out the garage door and stuff. And so I wasn't interested in that. So uh, I found like the heat lamp solution and um, I have two of these. Uh, I, I did a lot of trial and error. Um, I can put up either on the screen or, or in the description um, some of the things that I tried that didn't work. But this is what I, what I ended on. I've got um, a, a heater here on the floor that's tilted up towards me. And then I've got a heater up here that's on a tripod. It actually comes with this tripod that's sort of, that's tilted down. So the goal here is, you know, when you're swinging, you know, I've got some heat from up here, getting my lower half, some heat from up here, getting my upper half and my face and my head. And really once you start swinging, once these get going, um, it's, it's really pretty comfortable. Like it, it is freezing cold right here, standing outside of the range of the heat or standing closer to the camera, so I'm not in the range. But right about here where, where you're hitting, it's toasty. It's 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 comfy, and especially you know you, I put my hand up here, it's hot. So I'll talk uh, a little more specifically about the, the types of heaters that I have. Um, but I found that this solution, sort of the one pointing up, one pointing down, um, it is is a good solution for me here in the garage. Okay, so the this is the floor heater that's uh, tilting up at you. It's a Presto heat dish tilt. Uh, I purchased it at Costco. I think it was 80 bucks um, from Costco. And uh, the thing I like about this is it's um, it's a little less powerful. I think it's only a thousand watts rather than the 1500 watt maximum you can get for something that plugs into the wall. At least that's what I found the maximum is. 
but it's it's a parabolic heater, which means that um, the it's 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 like a it's like a half a globe basically of reflective material. The um, heat coils are inside behind this heat dish thing, and sort of heats back towards the back, and then all the heat is reflected out. And this thing I've found more than any other ones that um, that I tried does a good job of focusing the heat going out so that you can be a little bit farther away from it and still feel the heat. I'm behind the camera right now. The, so this thing, let's see if you can see this, it's almost at the edge of the mat. So it's pretty close to the edge of the mat. I am um, almost off of the mat right now, um, but in its path. I, I'm actually off the mat right now, but in its path and I can still feel the heat. Not as much, not as powerful as you know, if I'm standing over the ball, you know, right, right next to it, but it's, it's, um, you can feel it from a, a decent amount of way. Um, so that's what I like about this. Uh, again, I got it at Costco. I think it was about $80. Um, it does a nice job for something that you just plug into the wall. It's really focused heat, uh, which is what I'm looking for here in the garage when I'm hitting. Okay. So this next heater, you can actually see the box for it. Uh, in the background upside down. It's a heat storm um, tradesman infrared heater um, and it comes with a tripod. It's, it's, it comes as a unit. Uh, you need to buy the tripod unit if you want the tripod. I think it's a like a seven foot tripod or so. Um, and the thing that I like about this is it just raw heating output. Um, it, feels, it feels warmer than anything else that I tried. Um, it, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of features, you know, a lot of these have like low, medium, high settings or like a remote that you can turn on or off or a fan even to blow the air around. This doesn't do that. It's just a straight up, um, infrared heater, uh, but it gets, it gets pretty hot. And if your hands are up close to it, um, you, you can certainly feel it. Uh, one thing that I don't like as much about this specific heater, as well as this kind of heater is that the heat seems to dissipate um, pretty quickly once you get far enough away from it. Um, so for example, I was mentioning the, the heat dish that I have, you know, you can feel the heat um, even from, you know, six, seven, eight feet away. This, um, this infrared heater that's on the tripod, you really can't feel it from too far away. I, I probably can't be much farther away than when I'm standing over the ball. Um, in order to feel the heat. But it does it does make at least a little bit of a difference, uh, especially on the upper half of my body. The problem with the heat dish is that it can only, it, it can tilt, but it can only tilt um, upward. So it needs to be sitting flat on a surface in order to work. It can only tilt upward. So there is no way for me, unless I somehow found a way to cheat and put it upside down, there is no way for me to have, you know, a heat dish on the ground pointing up and a heat dish kind of up in the air pointing down. So uh, that's why I went with this tripod heater. It really does put out a lot of heat. Um, I think I got this one on Amazon for uh, 80 bucks, maybe 90 bucks, somewhere in there, less than 100 for sure. Um, it, it was it was on a pretty good sale when I got it. Um, so that's that's what I've got for my heating setup here in my garage. Um, it's a super cold day today, February in Minnesota. Like I said, my garage is, is 37 degrees right now. But when you're hitting, it, it doesn't feel like it. It feels pretty warm. Um, we have a few places here in Minnesota where um, they have, you know, big heat lamps like this and you can hit in the winter kind of from a garage bay sort of thing out onto a real range to, to see, um, you know, kind of how the ball is going rather than hitting in a dome or hitting in a simulator like this. This um, infrared heater that I have is kind of a mini version of that. Um, and it seems to do the job. It, it gets me warm um, and it's not wasting energy, you know, heating up the garage. I would love to heat up the garage. Eventually, once we redo the garage and we insulate it a little better, but for now, um, just heating me when I'm hitting is good enough. And so uh, this combination of these two heaters seems to do the job. One thing that I did want to mention are a couple of 
units that I tried and I rejected. I ended up buying like five or six different kinds of heaters from Amazon. Thankfully, I've, we've got Amazon Prime. They have free returns. So I used my Prime membership as sort of a, a trial and error deal to figure out what worked and what didn't. So these ones that I showed you are the ones that survived, but there were a few that didn't. So the big one that you probably, if you've done any research on this, you've probably come across is uh, a, a heat storm, the same brand as this tripod, um, but it's, it's a Wi-Fi wall mounted unit that um, has an app that comes with it and it has a fan that blows out hot air. So you can set the temperature up to 99 degrees, I think, and you can control it with the app and hit go and it'll, it, it works like a space heater. You know, it, it's got a, some sort of heating element inside it and it blows air over the heating element and that blows air out in the space to warm it up. I was excited about that one. I found it for a good deal. I think I got it for 80 or $90. That seems to be the price of what these things are, more or less. Um, but anyway, I got that, that heat storm Wi-Fi enabled one. I put it up in here. It just, it didn't work for my purposes. Um, it was it was trying to heat the space, but this garage is pretty big. We've got 12 foot tall ceilings in here. Um, it's it's a two car garage, but it's, it's relatively deep. And like I said, it's got 12 foot ceilings and it's not insulated. So it's cold in here. One little space heater wasn't doing it. Um, so that's why I returned that one. I think that could be a good unit. Um, if you've got an insulated space, maybe if you're not in Minnesota, if you're in somewhere that has a little bit milder winter, you still got a winter and you still have a simulator and you wanna um, hit over the winter, um, but you don't get so bitterly cold as Minnesota, that, that unit might be a good one for you. I, I did like the functionality of having the app, being able to, you know, you, I could turn it on from my phone like an hour before I wanted to come out here. Um, I think that's really promising and probably a good um, a good product for a lot of people's uses. It just didn't work for me. You know, I'd turn it on and I'd come out and the garage was maybe a degree warmer um, overall than when I turned it on, you know, an hour ago or whatever. So for my space, for my purposes, that didn't work. I bought a couple of other um, infrared heaters like this one you can see here, the, the heat storm on the tripod. And I tried to set them up in different areas around the garage. And the problem I found was that it was either, I had to set it up too far away from me. So I had to put it like on this table or on the floor. And like I said earlier, the heat really starts to dissipate from these things once you get farther away than a, a couple of feet. And it just, it was too far away to do anything for me. So I returned those. Um, again, those a lot of those had remote controls and sort of um, a low, medium, and high setting. Um, so they had some fancier bells and whistles. They maybe looked um, nicer, but uh, they they didn't have, I mean, the, the beauty of this one, the, the heat storm, is that it's on the tripod. So it's, it's movable, um, it, it's up high, and it angles down. It really met my needs perfectly. So, um, that's that's sort of what I tried. I think down the line, what we're gonna do, what we're gonna try to do in here, is uh, finish off the garage, get some better insulation for the door, so that this room itself is um, would be more amenable to putting in, you know, a, a, a real heater. And then at that point, we'll probably run a gas line out here um, to put in, you know, a, a serious heavy duty heater that could actually heat the garage from, uh, you know, 37 degrees like it is tonight up to 50, 55. Um, at that point, will these two space heaters, infrared heaters be necessary? I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, they probably would be as like a cheaper, um, easier solution to get you warm quickly. Um, that's the thing I like about these is you turn them on and you get heat within 10 seconds maybe. Um, 
that's that's one of the real good things about these infrared heaters which i'd like a couple other things that i considered and eventually rejected um, propane heaters or butane heaters or, or any kind of heater that heats you know an oil or a gas um, those get really hot there's a few um, i think they're called like torpedo heaters that you hook up a propane tank to and they they kick out a bunch of heat um, the problem with those is that at least to my understanding they're they're not safe you know when you're burning anything you uh, you're putting carbon monoxide in the air i'm in a closed garage uh, that sounded like a not great uh, combination to me so i shied away from those i know some people have them and as long as you're safe with them um, you know, I suppose that's a solution, but for me, uh, I've got, I've got two little kids, you know, I didn't want to take a risk. So, um, that's why I went with these two, uh, electric units and I've been, um, I've been really happy with them. Like I said, it is a freezing cold day outside today. Um, I'm just on the edge of the mat here. You can, you can't really tell how far away I am, but I'm just on the edge of the mat. I can feel the heat from them right now, especially from the heat dish on the ground. You know, if I step over here a little closer to the camera where I'm out of the sight of the heat dish and I'm sort of out of the range of the tripod heater, it's it's cold in here. I mean, it's it's 37, like I said, and it, it feels like it. I'm just in a, a vest and a little light golf jacket. But um, when you're standing right next to the ball where you would hit and you've got the heat from below and the heat from below blasting you, it feels like summer so all right so what don't i like about this heating setup let's let's talk about that there are only a few things but there are a couple um first of all and probably most importantly if you're gonna have um anyone over that's a lefty this setup isn't super duper portable um so they're going to be swinging over here. Their their back's going to be warm, and their butt's going to be warm, uh, but that doesn't feel as warm as if your front and your face is warm. So the power cords aren't long enough to bring them around here. Um, with this sort of heater, you're not supposed to plug them into uh, an extension cord. So that's not a problem for me. I don't have really many other people other than myself out here hitting. Um, so that's a problem in theory, but it is something to be aware of. Uh, another problem is if you do have more than one of you, even if you're both right-handed, um, the purpose of these heaters is to heat a thing that's right in front of them. It's not necessarily to heat the space. So, you know, if you've got, if it's your playing partner's turn and you're standing over here, you can see my breath there. It's pretty chilly. It's pretty chilly right here if I'm wait, awaiting my turn, you know, or my buddy's hitting, you know, 10 range balls, or like happens to me a lot of the time, I'll get the one shot, and then my, my five-year-old son says, I want to hit some, and then I, he pushes me off to the side, and he hits, you know, 10 shots or 15 shots or whatever, and I'm sitting over here freezing cold, and he's, you know, toasty warm in the heater. So that's, that's, um... That's another downside. Really, I think that's the biggest downside. These, these things have worked great for my purposes. Um, so again, pretty strong recommendations, but I did just want to point out a couple of negatives that I uh, experienced um, with, with this heater setup. So that's what I've got. That's my recommendation. I know it's already February, so uh, you might not be thinking about garage heat right now, but this is a lot of trial and error this winter uh, and, and earlier in the fall brought me to this. If you're thinking about what, what to do with your garage heat, um, recommendation for, for these couple products is heat dish you can get on Costco's website. I don't think you need to be a member, um, but it's, it's a little more expensive if you're not. This um, heat storm tradesman uh, infrared heater on the tripod I got on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description below. Um, and yeah, good recommendation for, for these heaters. They do the job of uh, heating me, but not necessarily heating the space. They just plug into the wall to a regular, you know, 110, 
outlet. So strong recommendation for that stuff. Last thing, tear down. Uh, with this setup, it's really simple. Um, the heat dish down here just has a little knobby that turns it off. Once you've turned it off, you can pick it up and move it. This tripod has a switch up here, just turns off. It's now off. I can move it here. One of the negative things about this tripod that I didn't bring up earlier, uh, the tripod base is pretty wide. Um, and it's not like you can, it, the, the head of the heater, you can't really swivel it around that base, or at least I haven't figured out how. Uh, so you're kind of at the mercy of where the three legs are in order to where you can place it, especially, you know, in this purpose. I don't want to put it so that the leg is on the, on the driving range mat or whatever. So I kind of have to angle it to get as close to the mat as I can while it's still pointing at me in order to get sort of the maximum um, heat output out of it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's, that's all there is for for um, teardown of the heaters. Um, the only other things I need to do are um, to put the driving range mat away, slide it away. You can see I've got some sort of padding uh, in front of the screen so that when my ball hits the screen and falls down, it'll, it won't just fall onto the concrete of the garage. So I got to roll up the carpet remnants and the little mats and so on and put them off in their corner. Um, and then it's just, you know, finding the right place for the snowblower so that I can pull the cars in, but that's it. Um, you know, it probably takes six minutes to five minutes to, to set up and to tear down. It's really a pretty, um, pretty simple, straightforward solution. So that's the video. Thanks for watching. Again, um, leave me a like if you like the content. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. I try to answer all of them. Um, I'm releasing one golf video a week on Mondays. Um, if you want to stay updated, feel free to subscribe. You don't have to if you don't want to, of course, but uh, it would help me, um, you know, as I try and find my way around what kind of content people want to see. Um, so subscribe if, if you want to. Um, like I said, comment, question, happy to answer stuff. And yeah, again, just thanks for watching. I'm doing this for fun, sort of for my own um, enjoyment. So if other people like it, that's great. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be uh, putting out some content. So appreciate uh, you watching. Thanks so much. And we'll see you on the course.